We began looking last week at the disciple Peter. Peter is a great character. He's rich and complex, impulsive, outspoken, can be extremely loyal, but then in a moment of madness, he can deny that he even knows Jesus. He was an uneducated man. He was a fisherman. He worked hard for a living, all hours of the day and night. I'd imagine if you was around Peter, you might smell a bit. But Jesus picked him out to be one of his disciples. And it soon became apparent as we read the story of Jesus in the Gospel that Jesus was training Peter to become the leader of the disciples when he completed his mission here on earth. Whilst he was with Jesus, he gradually became the leader of the group. In many ways, he was a bit of a natural leader. And he had that vision, that special vision of Jesus. And of course, when we looked at last week, we recognised that when Jesus said, Who am I? It was Peter who said, You are the Christ. And Jesus said, I'm going to build my church on your leadership. But he had a few wobbles, ended up denying Christ. But that didn't matter. Jesus restored him to his full potential on the beach at Galilee when he said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my people. And so this week, we're not going to look at him as still being as a disciple, but as the apostle. As a result of the coming of the Holy Spirit, Peter was transformed into a dynamic apostle and witness to Jesus Christ. And he led the church in those early days. He became the natural preacher of the group and the early church in Amos, Jerusalem and Asia. Mine. What's an apostle? Let's get that clear. The word refers especially to Jesus Christ's 12 disciples and also to Paul. Scripture identifies the functions of apostles and their authority, which is derived directly from Jesus himself. An apostle is one who is sent by Jesus Christ into the world. That's what an apostle are. We do have some differences in the, the church today as what apostles actually mean today. Are they relevant? Some churches believe they are relevant today. Some of them. But that's not important for us this morning. The important thing is they were special, a group of special people, that inner group that began the church. They were sent into the world. And as the Spirit came on to Peter, he stepped out into the world proclaiming that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Here's a few odd sentences from the book of Acts shortly after the coming of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to what I have to say about Jesus of Nazareth, proclaimed Peter. God proved that he was sent to you by having him work miracles, wonders and signs. All of you know this. God has already planned and decided that Jesus would be handed over to you and so you took him and had evil men put him to death on a cross. 
But God set him free from death and raised him to life. Death could not hold him in his power. All of us can tell you that God has raised Jesus to life. Jesus was taken up to sit at the right hand side of God and he was given the Holy, has given us the Holy Spirit just as the Father promised. Jesus is also the one who has given the Spirit to us and that is what you are now seeing and hearing. When the people heard this, they were very upset. They asked Peter and the other apostles, Friends, what shall we do? Peter said, Turn back to God. Be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven. Then you will be given the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children. It is for everyone our Lord will choose, no matter how they live. So Peter discovers his gift of ministry as the disciples step onto the streets of Jerusalem shortly after Pentecost. And the, Pen and the Holy Spirit was able to guide and direct Peter and the other disciples to proclaim Jesus' death and resurrection and the church grew and they began the ministry to continue the ministry that Jesus had become against the needy, the poor and those who were really seeking God. A scene from the DVD, the Bible, that illustrates how Peter has become this charismatic leader and teacher and uh, learned theologian really. Peter is no longer the denying disciple but the eloquent apostle. No longer afraid to stand up to the authorities. And you see in that clip there, he stands up to the high priest who threatens him with imprisonment and death. The high priest tells him, you can't talk about Jesus, but Peter doesn't take any notice of that. He goes out onto the streets to continue to heal and preach the truth about Jesus. The high priest locks him up again, but that doesn't stop him. He continues. I have no silver or gold, people told the lame man. But I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And with words like this, Peter fulfills Jesus' prediction that he would become the rock and the foundation on which the church would grow. No fear, but just that inner assurance that Jesus was with them. And Peter takes and seizes this opportunity and becomes the person who's the apostle and that we can learn from. And of course, one of the things about looking at Peter as a character within the story of Scripture is it should help us grow as disciples. Because Peter wasn't perfect. We saw that very much this week and even in as the apostle he had to learn new things but he had a mind that was open to Jesus and focused on the right things and that's just like we can be none of us are perfect in everything but Peter did what we all should do we should be witnesses to our faith that brings us to church on a Sunday and takes us through to the waters of baptism too. Um, we look at Peter, don't we? He was uneducated. He wasn't an eloquent man. He wasn't a person who was used and grew up talking to groups of people, powerful people. But through the spirit which God gave him, 
he was able to do that. And he became this witness to the life, death of Jesus, which is the most important thing for people to know. And it's still the most important people thing that people need to know about our life as a Christian today. We need to be known witnesses to the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and to state the fact that we are living in that knowledge and seeking to keep to the faith of the Christian church today. Peter always kept his feet on the ground. He didn't go off key so much as he did when he before when he was with Jesus as a disciple. He didn't let, let his newfound status, if you like, go to his head. He simply did what Jesus taught him to do, what he'd seen Jesus do. And Peter became the apostle, the rock on which the church was founded and to which we are living under today. Just want to highlight just the story of Peter and Cornelius. Cornelius was a Roman centurion and Peter got into this situation that could have been a bit tricky, but Peter overcame it. That's a clip from the film again. Just gives you an outline of what this story is all about. Peter is in Joppa and he has a vision during a prayer time whilst he's in Joppa. And in this prayer time, Peter sees all types of food and animals. And the Lord commands Peter to eat it all. He doesn't quite understand this. What's God showing him this? He's a Jew. He's kosher. He doesn't eat certain foods because he believes they're unclean. But this vision he has from God clearly is challenging that belief he's had since a child. And then the Romans come knocking at his door. Well, the Romans were feared by most Jews. And yet, he goes with them because he believes it's right. Cornelius, as it turns out, is a, what they call a God-fearer. Although he's a Roman, he's in charge of a garrison of Roman soldiers in Caesarea, 33 miles away from where Peter is staying, he sees a vision. An angel comes before him, recognising that he is somebody who believes in God but doesn't fully understand anything about faith and belief. And this angel says, send people to Joppa where Peter the Apostle is, and he will come and explain everything. And this is what happens. Peter goes. Cornelius is waiting. And when he goes in there to Cornelius's house, Cornelius explains he's had this vision. He tells him what the vision is about. And then Peter realises that he needs to preach the gospel to Cornelius. Because this is a man who needs to know that Jesus Christ is his saviour. Now that was difficult for Peter because Cornelius was a Gentile. Jews didn't like meeting with Gentiles. They tried to avoid Gentiles on every account. But of course, the mission 
that Jesus brought into this world was not just for the Jews, it was for everybody. And we see that Peter and Paul were becoming the two leading lights that needed to change those Jews who came to believe in Jesus to let them know that Gentiles, all, in other words, everybody, no matter what nationality, what race they were, were welcome in to the kingdom of God. Now, Peter could have mucked this out big time, but he didn't. He preached the gospel, and as he preached the gospel, he saw the Holy Spirit come upon Cornelius' family and household. And the people there began speaking in tongues, a sign that the Holy Spirit had come into their lives. And Peter didn't muck it up. He baptised them, Cornelius and his family became a Christian. And then later on, Peter, at a council back in Jerusalem when Paul was there, convinced the rest of the church, the new church, that the message of Jesus needed to go to the rest of the world, not just to those. He realises he needed to go to see Cornelius and preach the gospel. And that was his mission as an apostle of Christ to the world. So Peter, the blundering disciple, becomes an apostle on which the church began to stand and which is still standing today. And of course we come back to this great text that we need to highlight here that Paul <coughs> wrote from when he was writing to the Galatian church. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. That great text that I'm sure we're all well aware of, that means no matter who we are, when we become a Christian, we come into God's universal family. And this all began through Peter, the Apostle. He went on not only to be an Apostle, but really a missionary, and travelled throughout Asia Minor, Corinth and Rome. And next week we will look at the fact that he became a theologian and an author. And I thought one interesting point, you might all not know, but did you know Peter took his wife with him on mission. Mm. 